Hey guys, Steve Bivens here with another one of my 52 things I think I know. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about a really big, it's a, it's a really big idea. Um, and this comes out of some, some, some thoughts I had during, during and after and reflecting back on, um, my book, The End of Fear Itself. Uh, and I've come to the conclusion that one of the things I think I know is that there's really only two basic paths that you can take. You can either take a path based on compassion or fear. Um, and those are the two choices. <laughs> uh, any, All choices, whatever motivations you think you might have for your choices they boil down to more or less one of those two things now that it doesn't mean you're all compassionate or all feel fearful it's a sliding kind of scale between the two things but they are opposites <laughs> the more compassion you have the less fear you're gonna have and the more fear you have the less compassion Good morning, Mother. And, and hello, Chris. Good to see you, man. Um, <coughs> yeah, and I know I'll, I'll get people that will probably argue with me on this point, but you, if you, any, any choice you have to make about yourself, about other people, about things that happen to you, Will come down to whether you make that decision based on something you're afraid of happening or afraid of might happen um, or afraid of what has happened <laughs> or out of compassion for yourself or for other people in other words understanding where they're coming from now this is not this is not easy to do <laughs> um, it's one of the hardest things in the world to do, especially, I mean, it's easy to, to feel compassion for people we agree with. Right. Uh, and, and I, I think we talked about this in an earlier, I think I did in an earlier video. Uh, if not, then I'll have to do some more about it, talk some more about it later. But, uh, it's easy to feel compassion for people that we agree with and that we like, but that's not the real test in life. The real test is can we feel compassion for people we disagree with, especially ones we disagree with strongly and that we don't like. <clears throat> and this is a tough one. It's a, it's, it's a lifelong probably process of learning to try to figure out how do I cultivate compassion for people that I don't like or disagree with strongly. But it's your choice. Because if you don't choose to to try to understand them and show compassion for them, even if you disagree with them, then you're acting out of fear. Because you're afraid of being wrong, you're afraid of whatever. I mean, long list of possible fears. But it is either fear or it's compassion. And it's more of one that or the other. It's not usually all one or all the other, the extreme. It's usually somewhere in the middle. But, you know, in, in any given situation, you have to ask yourself, understanding is, is the, is the, Chris, yes, a very good question. Understanding is the root of compassion. You have, in, in order to, to show compassion for someone else, you have to, because, because compassion means suffering with literally um so in order to suffer with someone right in order to under then you have to understand their suffering and understand where they're coming from on some level or another right and that's that's why it's so difficult to feel compassion for people we disagree with because we're it's very difficult to understand what why would they would think so differently than we do uh, really hard as we all know so 
the more you cultivate that understanding, that compassion, the less your fear will be overall and in that particular situation. Uh, most, most of us default to fear because it's our lizard brain and kicks in. It's like, oh my God, there's this, I, I disagree with them. They must be wrong and I can't be wrong. And, you know, we retreat and we, we come out in, in, in combative mode. And, uh, and I do it <laughs> all the time. Um, I'm trying to be compassionate with myself for doing that because it's quite natural reaction. It's a fear reaction but something that's worth um, working on and developing more and more compassion. Because the more and more compassion you have, the less and less fear you're going to have, period. Uh, the two things don't coexist on equal levels. <laughs> yeah, you can always learn something Absolutely, um, a very good point, and that—that's the key of it. To it, it's like you can. It's a question you can ask. What can I learn from this person or this situation? It's not always necessarily a person. It could be just a situation that you disagree with or you don't like. Uh, what can you learn? What is the lesson in this confrontation? All right. What can I learn here? Um, and that is kind of the way you can get into thinking about, okay, if, I, if I'm trying to learn something, what can they teach me? Or what can I learn at least from the situation, from, from the disagreement? Uh, what can I learn about them? And what does it tell me about myself? Even more importantly, uh, a reflective, uh, introspective question why do they you know evoke this fearful response in me uh yeah definitely a primer for your brain yet yeah, why do they why do, why am i reacting in a fearful way in this situation and so you, you can use that as a tool to dig down and think about your reactions to the things and people around you um, and instead of reacting, eventually, the goal is to respond, <laughs> uh, which means pause, right? Think, be compassionate, try to find some compassion, and then give a response instead of that initial reaction. I, I'm very reactionary. Uh, I was crabby as hell yesterday morning and snapped at pace when I was driving to work. <laughs> over st stupid crap traffic doesn't even matter right just the, the most mundane crap there is traffic right and what even bad traffic right <laughs> she's only five minutes from work uh it's just irritating and and, and i just kind of snapped at her because she said something and i was like oh my god i felt like an ass right because i was in that moment and but you know let I'm realizing, you know, today I'm like, okay, I'm not an ass all the time. <laughs> Why did I react that way? What is it that triggers those negative reactions? And uh, that is key to, to trying to figure out. That's self-compassion, which is more important than it. Because if you can't feel compassion for yourself, it's really hard to feel it for other people. Um, truly feel it for other people, especially ones that you disagree with, uh, because most of the time we disagree with ourselves, strangely enough. Uh, hello, Cousin Richard, how are you? Uh, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. I don't want to stay on here too long because it's supposed to be short, but this is an important one, so uh, taking a few minutes, and, and Chris Ginge here has brought up some very good uh, points, and I wanted to respond to those. But uh, anyway, that's enough for today, uh, for this week. And I uh, hope you guys are enjoying these things or getting something out of them. Uh, I, I do because I have to actually think about them a little bit before I get on here. Not too much. <laughs> I don't make notes or anything. 
Uh, yes, we need to we need to do some chats. Maybe we can do that today or later. I don't know. Um, kind of busy day here, but uh, we'll find a time soon, Chris. All right. See you guys later.